hello everybody and welcome to this channel once again thanks so much for clicking on this video so if you're new here kindly hit on the subscribe button to subscribe if you are old here thanks so much for coming back again so today we're going to discuss some photoshop mistakes that everyone should stop doing or this probably might be for beginners because if you've been work working in photoshop for quite a long time most of the times you might come across this and then you would overcome them so we are doing this right away so let's head into photoshop Number one, I'm going to talk about resolution and low quality images. So if you start up a new document in Photoshop, probably you might come across this area that is um, resolution over here. Most of the times people don't take notice of this, but it is very important. You have to set the resolution according to the work that you are going to do. For instance, I'm going to work in an A4 size and I have the resolution to be 300 over here, which is going to give me a file size of 24.9 megabytes right but people don't take notice of this maybe you worked with a particular image that has the resolution of 72 uh, 72 right and you are working with another or you'll be working with another document now you have to take notice of it because if for instance you are working with 72 resolution in a4 size and you have an, a, an image size of 1.4 that would be very bad you know so you have to check on the resolution that you are going to it mostly confuses people because the previous documents that it worked on they wouldn't check they would just go ahead and select a different uh, preset and then go ahead with it so you have to check on your resolution because that will probably determine how quality your work will be like and also talking of low quality images when you go to file and then you try to open a new document i have a low quality image over here over here now if you open this one and you try to let me check the image size first if you go to check the image size over here you see that the resolution of this particular picture is 39 right so if you try to zoom in the moment you zoom in about two three times you see that the pixels it, it, it will start getting the de depixelated right now what you have to do is this if you have this particular image and you are putting it on a work of about 600 resolution um, work probably this might not work with it right so in case you are choosing the stock images to use in your works in photoshop you try as much as possible to get a very um, high resolution pictures according to the site if you are to put this on let's say a business card or something that has a very low quality image that will work very fine but if you have to put this and let's say a 12 by something something fit banner this wouldn't help at all so you work on your resolution and the stock images that you choose for your works number two we're going to talk about failing to use keyboard shortcuts i know mostly people tend to think that they can just do everything with their mouse in their hands but let me tell you one thing it gets really easy if you have the shortcut at your fingertips now let's go ahead and create a new document let's say we create a new a4 over here and then we're going to try to type in something uh we type in something like let's say innocent right okay so i'm going to increase the size over here and you see i just said that i'm going to increase the size over here but probably i did not use or i did not use any of the mounts or uh, i go i did go to edit and then transform or anything because i use ctrl t and if you have if you've been watching my tutorials for quite a long time you can see that whilst i'm talking to you i'll tell you that i'm doing something meanwhile it wouldn't reflect over here so getting the shortcut at your fingertips will be very great for you now if you make if you want to make a duplicate of it of course you can go here and go to duplicate layer but you just and then you click ok and then you everything the duplicate has been made right now you just calculate the steps we took from going from here to innocent right clicking and then duplicating it's just weird but if you press ctrl or command if you are using a mac ctrl j it just makes the duplicate for you and then you are good to go or better still you can say that you can drag it over here to a new layer and then you make different couple of 
duplicates for you but trust me if you use the control j that is the shortcut it is going to help you a whole lot or else you can hold alt and then drag and then you make a duplicate that one too is very simple like i was saying earlier i told you i'm transforming this particular test but i did not go to edit transform and then free transform or scale or rotate and anything i just press ctrl t and then i was able to transform this whole thing so if you get the shortcuts at your fingertips it pretty makes working in photoshop very easy in case you are doubting something if you go to adjustment over here and then everything you see here and saturation has its own um shortcuts color balance everything has its own shortcut or better still if you go to edit then keyboard shortcuts here it is going to display almost all the shortcuts that photoshop has almost everything everything is over here so you can take time to master them or you can take time to write them down so that you'll be going over and over again as simple as that so using the shortcuts makes working in photoshop very easy and simple for you number three i'm going to talk about not using adjustment layers you know if you open a file in photoshop let's say i'm talking of a picture probably yeah so let me open this particular picture in photoshop now if i have this photoshop file or a picture opening photoshop photoshop has provided a whole lot of adjustments over here that you can make use of but instead of us using it probably sometimes you tend to go to the image over here now here is the case if you use the adjustments from this area you're going to, it is going to affect the picture only that one is very obvious let's say we use the color balance over here and then we try to change some color balance it is going to affect this particular image and that is pretty cool but what if you save the image and later on you remember that you made a mistake and then you have to change this particular color adjustment already you've saved it so there is no way you are going back or you are getting the original file back that is why it is very important to make use of the adjustment layer over here if you click on here everything that has that is in the image over there is here we have the color balance over here and then just like we change it we have it like this so if you save this one like this and then later on you you remember that you have to make some adjustments or probably you have to get rid of the color balance that you did all that you need to do is double click over here and then you can change it or better still if you don't want it at all you just go ahead and delete it and then you have your original picture back it goes on and on to the hue and saturation the black and white the photo filter gradient and everything that you need to do so if you apply a gradient of this like like this one on it you change the overlay to, um, the color mode to overlay and then you decrease the opacity maybe it looks good to you but some maybe you want to change it again you just go to the adjustment and then you change it and everything will be okay if you don't want it and you want to go back to your original photo you just delete the layer and then you are good to go next i'm going to talk about groupings in photoshop some people are masters in photoshop i am not a master myself i don't want to be a master also but some people are masters in photoshop and still they do these mistakes groupings in photoshop makes your work look unique now let's check out something here these layers that you see over here right now i have oh, almost just four layers one two three four but if i'm to open these layers you are going to see that i have a whole different things under it like this you see so if i turn this one on and i bring this one you see i have a different set of or a different grouping and i have another grouping over here you see it, it contains a whole lot of layers under them and this one also contains different set of layers under them but i just group them to make them unique now it all it all starts when we start making photoshop um, work we create a new layer and then we say we will group them then we create another one so by the time we realize we are having over 20 layers and then we've not grouped them and then you realize that you've been working for like four hours or let's say six hours without grouping anything so you know groupings make photoshop very unique if you want to if you want to find something you know that this grandchildren over here or the order of service is found in the group one so all that you need to do is open the group one and then you locate grandchildren and you can make easy edits just like that 
So groupings in Photoshop makes the work very easier and very simple. All that you need to do is select the, the number of layers that you want to group all of them and then you press Ctrl G. I talked about control uh, shortcuts earlier. So you press Ctrl G and then it groups them for you. So that's it. Groupings makes works very easier. So try to um, make groupings in all the works that you do. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is forgetting to save regularly. I don't know the type of machine that you are using, but trust me, the machine that I'm using currently, the battery is not working. So I have to, I'm using it more or less like um, a PC. You see, you check the battery over here. Now, if you are using a machine that has a correct battery, fine, you are safe. But if you're not and you're using, let's say, a PC, where if the power cuts off, you are most likely to lose almost all the works that you've been doing in like two hours. You definitely need to try this one. Here is the case that I do save every little thing that I do. For instance, if I'm to add a gradient pattern to this particular work just now, I'll go ahead and click or tap on Ctrl S to save it. Saving regularly saves you a whole lot from different things. You can't imagine working for like three, four, five hours and then all of a sudden the light goes off and unfortunately for you Photoshop doesn't provide the backup um, work it will be so very sad it will be very hectic I'm pretty sure the kind of project that you're doing you're not going to do so all you need to do is just anything you add a different layer like this you go ahead and then you save it you add another layer you go ahead and you save it. that one it keeps you um, safe from all those safe from losing the work that you're doing safe from um, power cuts save from you know sometimes Photoshop glitches it I don't know if because I'm using the unregistered Photoshop but sometimes it does glitches or you are working and then all that you see is uh, the software has stopped working it happens it happens sometimes it happens so you have to get a very good backup plan and the very best backup plan that you can ever have is always saving your works it saves you from so many things that you need to um, think of so that will be all for now I think we've had about five things that we need to take very good notice of them I'm I'm sure you got at least one of them very useful and I'm sure at least one of them um, you've never heard of it and thank you so much for watching this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be coming up with different tips for you on Photoshop so you stay tuned you stay around so that we work in Photoshop till then continue creating and continue making something good in Photoshop. I'll catch you again. Innocent here. Bye.